Hello! In today's video, we'll be talking about how to model molecules. So first, what are molecular models and why are they so important to us in our investigation of chemistry? So like many of the other models that we have made and looked at over the course of this year in 8th grade science, models help to take something that we can't see or that is abstract and make it visual and more easily understood. Molecular models help us to do the same thing with the molecular structure of a compound. So molecular models are visual representations of a molecule. These visual representations help us to get more information than we could from simply the chemical formula alone. First, when looking at a molecular model, I can easily and quickly identify the type and number of atoms that are present in the molecule. If you look over here at this example, I can see that I could quickly look at this model and determine what types of atoms are there and how many of each there are. Secondly, a model helps us to get an understanding of the shape or the overall structure of the molecule. Finally, beyond just the shape and structure, it gives us specific information about exactly how the atoms are bonded together. So which atoms are bonded to which within the molecule? And how are they bonded? We'll talk about the different types of bonds in a moment. So in this unit, you will be creating several different types of molecular models. One type of molecular model that you could create is a two-dimensional model, which could be either through drawing or computer rendering. Here's an example of that. Another type is a three-dimensional drawing or painting. This is what you'll be creating in your Marbled Molecules project. Finally, we can also create real three-dimensional physical models using various materials. An example of this would be using the Molly Mod kits that we have to actually create three-dimensional models of molecules and compounds. Now that we know what molecular models are, let's talk about the components or the parts of a molecular model. In any molecular model, first you have circles that are used to represent each atom. Some things to keep in mind when creating your molecular models. Each of these circles should represent one single atom of a certain element. In order to identify the element that it represents, it should be color-coded and identified with the appropriate elemental symbol of the element that it is that you are trying to represent. Secondly, we should make sure that the size of our circles align accurately with what we know about the mass or the radius of each element. For example, if I am drawing oxygen and hydrogen, I should make sure that my hydrogen atoms are represented with smaller circles to indicate that hydrogen is a smaller atom than the oxygen. In addition to the circles that represent each atom in the molecule, we also have lines to represent the chemical bonds which hold the molecule together. The atoms that are bonded together in the molecule should be attached with lines to represent the bond that holds that set of atoms together. When drawing a single bond, we'll use one line. When drawing a double bond, we'll use two lines. Now, if it's a triple bond, you would of course use three lines, but at our level, we will mostly be dealing with simply single and double bonds. A very helpful rule in taking a chemical formula and trying to turn it into a molecular model is our CNOH rule. It might be helpful for you to create a mnemonic device to remember this, like crossroads is not over here, I don't know, something like that. So CNOH, we wanna count down from four down to one. So C representing four, N three, O two, and H one. The CNOH rule helps us to remember the number of bonds that each one of these common elements is able to form. Starting at C, we can see that carbon is only able to form a total of four bonds. Nitrogen, on the other hand, can only form three bonds in total. You can see here that each nitrogen has three bonds attached to it. Oxygen, next on the list, can form two bonds. And hydrogen, this one will be very, very important because you will see that we find hydrogen in almost all of the compounds that we look at, can only form a single bond. This means that as we are modeling these molecules, you are going to find hydrogen on the outside or surrounding areas of the molecule because it cannot form enough bonds to be in the middle of multiple atoms. 
So now we should be just about ready to look at an example of creating a molecular model. Let's start with this example, methane, which has a chemical formula of CH4. So in order to create this model, the first thing I wanna do is determine the type and number of atoms that are present. So first, I'll make sure to identify here that I have C, which I know stands for carbon, and I also have H, which I know represents hydrogen. Now let's look at how many atoms of each I should have in this model. I can see that for carbon, using my reading chemical formula rules, I have a single atom, and for hydrogen, we have four. Now that we've identified the type and number of atoms that are present in this methane molecule, we're ready to create our model. So keeping in mind my CNOH rule, I know that carbon is able to form four bonds and hydrogen is only able to form one single bond. This tells me that carbon is going to be my central atom in this molecule. So we'll go ahead and get started by creating my first circle to represent the one carbon atom that is present in this molecule. I'll create my circle and I'll first decide on a color code. We often use black to represent carbon, so we'll go ahead and use black in this case as well. I then want to make sure that I am labeling the circle with the appropriate elemental symbol. Since we're looking at carbon, I know that my symbol is capital C. So I'll go ahead and add that, do a little bit of formatting, make it large and clear. And now we have the first atom in our molecular model. Next, I can see that I have four hydrogens that are going to be bonded to this carbon. So now I will need to add in the chemical bonds that we know attach the atoms in any molecule. So I will go ahead and add four bonds to this carbon to make space for the attachment of our hydrogen. Now that we have our four bonds, we're ready to go ahead and add in our hydrogen. So I'll go ahead and create another circle to represent hydrogen, keeping in mind that hydrogen is an atom with a smaller radius, so creating a smaller circle to represent that. Let's go ahead and decide on a color code for this hydrogen. I guess I'll go ahead and make it blue. There we go. Now I need to go ahead and put in my very clear labeling with the elemental symbol, which I know for hydrogen is H. There we have our first hydrogen atom. Now thinking back to what we determined by reading the chemical formula, I know that I should have three more hydrogen atoms, so I'll go ahead and copy those and attach them to each of the bonds that we've already created. Now that that's in place, you can now see that I have a fully completed molecular model of the compound methane, CH4. Now we'll go ahead and use the same steps to create another molecular model of methane, but using our three-dimensional Molly Mod Kit. So I know I'm going to need a single carbon atom four hydrogen atoms, and four chemical bonds to represent the bonds that hold the methane molecule together. So just like we did in our drawing, I'm going to start with my carbon atom, and I'm going to attach four bonds to represent the four bonds present in the molecule of methane. I now know that I have four hydrogen atoms that will be bonded to the carbon in this molecule. Here I can see C, H4, four single bonds, and another example of molecular model of methane. 